I mean, I think for anyone who's you're thinking about how you should spend your time, just you've got to plan a retreat once a year. I just, I can't emphasize how helpful it was. It was a silent retreat, self-led. Um, I was just at a retreat center that had a chapel and a lot of quiet. It was kind of out in the country um, and just silence for basically three and a half days. And the fourth day, I still got a lot of uh, spiritual a- uh, activity. But um, yeah, I mean, really what it looked like was I mean, one, I wanted to, for it to be a time of detaching, you know, I mean, even, you know, you know, even if we're not struggling with serious, serious sin, you know, it's hard to say that sin isn't serious ever, but, you know, grave versus not grave sin with things like our technology, like still the addictiveness of pulling out the phone, you know, we do it. Like I, I realize I do that without even thinking about it, that- you know, it's scary. I mean, literally I'll just be like, I'll have my phone up and I'll just opened it. And I'll be like, wait, why did I do that? Right. Like, I don't even know, you know? And just that, just putting that, like, not have, not nothing, no, none of that for three days, basically, you know? And I told the team, I got everything set up. So I was like, all right, I have a flip phone with me. Here's the number if there's an emergency, only emergencies, and that's it. You know, I told our board, told my family, basically, and like, you can't contact me otherwise. Um, and so that was, it was just really important to, you know, there's this book called deep work and that's really geared toward people who are trying to be productive in what they do. It's trying to, instead of doing shallow work, do deep work where you think on a deeper level. And he says, there's something about the grand gesture where someone will pay to go in some nice hotel or whatever to be able to finish their book, you know, to just, lock themselves in the room for 12 hours. Someone got, they they liked writing when they're on a plane. So they literally just took a round trip flight to like Japan and back to finish (laughs) their book, you know? Um, And, but I think there's something about that notion of the grand gesture. Like I flew to the other, you know, to the East coast. I live in Denver to the East coast to, to go on a retreat. And the whole thing was just retreat oriented. You know, I'm getting on the plane and I'm like, I'm on a mission right now to just hone in detach from all of the little attachments and everything that have built up that we think we say they're not serious, but it's like, how much time do I waste that I could have spent serving God could have spent growing in holiness. But because I have this little attachment, I fill my mind up with this thing, this preoccupation, this worldly pleasure, this way of just getting rid of the anxiety instead of being filled up with God amidst all of that and using those little difficulties, the bigger crosses that I'm dealing with as opportunities for growth, you know, uh, this was a time to step back and really examine a lot of that. Um, and it was so helpful, but I think it made me realize one of the insights was, I think we have to treat our, th- those attachments that we have, you know, like, like an addict in a way, like we are addicted to sin and someone who's an addict has to first come to the recognition that we really can't do it all ourselves. We have to try, but of course we can't. And the next thing is believing that God can give us the grace. If we, and if we cooperate with it, having the hope that we can overcome these things, even if it seems like I'm so weak, how am I going to actually grow where I live in the presence of God throughout my day? You know, um, where I get over these attachments, um, you know, I get over my impatience, um, or my curiosity or, you know, vanity or pride or whatever it is like, I think that was just one really big insight, I think, from it and taking that seriously. And part of that is, I think, you know, Dave, you have a great talk on the traditional Latin mass. And one of the things you emphasize is how a lot of negative theology has been, I think that's a term you use, has been totally cast aside. I remember listening to that talk five, six years ago. And I was like, this is one of the best talks I've ever heard on the mass. And that that exact part of it was, um, sticks with me to this day that, we need to we need to have some of that negative theology to lay the groundwork so that we don't treat not grave sins as not that big of a deal. And so certainly so we don't treat grave sins as a big deal, as as not a big deal. You know, we have to take that time to reflect like this really it's like we we become more relativists in our head saying, oh, this isn't that big of a deal, this isn't that big of a deal, you know, uh, even though we would say objectively, I know LGBT is wrong. But the sins in my life would become more relativist in a certain way about like, 
oh, it's not that bad, like whatever, you know, and, and we just have to see, we are really in a battle of good and evil of light and darkness of, of love and, and death. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the battle that our Lord died on the cross for and we're called to participate in, but we can't, we have to acknowledge that in our own lives. So that was really important for me um, in this time, did an examination kind of went over my, my, my rule of life you know, my different habits for the next year, I'm going to really hone in on, um, kind of examine my, my vision for life. I meditated, you know, on, on death and, um, and, uh, heaven and hell, um, on the cross, on the incarnation, um, on the Trinity, on our lady, on the Eucharist, just trying to get some of the basics, you know, essentials, like coming back to those realities. And then from there, what is my calling from this? So trying to discern some, the spirits with, you know, my own spiritual life, my own vocational path and, um, the active life, so to speak. And for me, I, you know, my work is an apostolate, but for anyone that could just be, you know, whatever work that you do, maybe there are certain questions you have, things you're trying to discern on ethics or on just the right path to go forward, to be effective in your work, you know, to make the right decisions. If you have a lot of, if you're in a kind of a managerial executive position, decisions you have to make, um, and, and I was trying to pray a lot with the, the gift of counsel. You know, as you can go back to listen to that episode. It really helps guide practical decision making. But I needed that space to step back at least. You know, it's been a while since I've had this large, long of a silent retreat. I think even longer is even better. But the three and a half days did a lot for me. So, um, and certainly it revitalized my my interior life, a mental prayer. I mean, all that stuff is a part of it, but um, really helped revitalize it in a way that I think I know I hope and pray it's going to be fruitful. I'm just a few days out. So thus far, it's been really helpful just these past few days. But um, I'm, I'm, I think that there's there's been a deep, deep-rooted seed planted in me that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have that grand gesture and space to really let, for sure. let the Holy Ghost guide. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I think just to dovetail on that, yeah, the grand gesture, like you say, because ultimately what I see that as doing is, is we're being generous with God. Right. And, and God is never outdone in generosity. That's one of my two of my favorite lines. God is never outdone in generosity. And isn't it good to be Catholic? But um, yeah, so if we make that effort to give God time to make that retreat, I think that's why it's oftentimes a moment of such grace, because we are taking that time for God. And I'm glad that you sort of zeroed on detachment, because, boy, that's something we all definitely need. I think all of us would do well to just zero in on certain aspects of our life where we Again, we might not even be thinking like these are like serious sins. They're not mortal sins. We might not even sometimes see them as venial sins. But yeah, detachment is very important. 